Ladies and gentlemen, we are back once again. Um, it's going to be, again, pretty much just like it was uh, in the last video. I know this isn't what everybody signed up for, but again, we're going to be adding some stuff. So um, also, we're not ready yet. But uh, hey, we got the Raiders up today, and that's for a reason. We're going to go through, it's going to be another short video, we're going to go through the three football games that are going on. And I have one player from each game that uh, you should keep an eye on. And I also went a step further, and I assigned a, um, a team for those guys. So uh, watch out for this player, and here's who I think would be a good fit. Uh, please don't cough. Podcast is easier. I can pause it and cough. I can't do that because this is live. All right. First game, Utah State versus Michigan State. Um, that's going to be 6 o'clock. You're going to have to choose in the next two unless you want to or can flip back and forth. But uh, this one is on by its lonesome at 6 o'clock. Um, the guy that I think would make sense to keep an eye on, what I, another thing that I'm going to try to do is um, try to mix it up. So I'm going to keep a running list so I don't every time Michigan State comes up, I don't have the same guy every time. So I'm going to try to mix it up every single time to bring in a different person. But um, LJ Scott is the guy. He's probably the only one from Michigan State that I can see that has at least some potential to be early round. He's probably more mid-round at this point. But uh, Michigan State running back, 6'1", 226, uh, projected 40 in like the 4.6s, maybe high 4.5, so definitely not a lot of speed there. Um, but no, I'm sorry, his projected round is third round right now, at least. So right now what I have, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it yesterday, I do have a big board of about 350 prospects. And um, again, it's sort of like last year, it's an aggregation. I'm still working on getting it all put together. But um, if you're interested in seeing it, get in the uh, Facebook group, Mock Drafts. Uh, again, I, I should try, try to get a, a uh, I'll put the link in the description. How about that? You can find the link in the description. But get involved in there. I'll be sharing um, what I have so far. And again, it's an aggregation from what I can find around, uh, around the internet of, um, you know, rankings. So about 350 guys. But anyways, right now, this guy is about a third round projection. He's averaging 4.9 yards per carry. So big, strong guy is kind of, kind of what we're moving away from in the NFL. You know, we're looking for, you know, the Le'Veon Bells, the David Johnsons, the, the guys that are, you know, as much running backs as they are receivers. But he'll be, a, he'll be able to fill a role, I think. And it's, it's tough to find a team that's going to need basically a fullback at running back. Um, but I went with the Raiders for my team fit. Um, I just feel like the Marshawn Lynch thing is coming to a close. Um, I, I didn't put it in the notes because I did scant notes. I was going to go back and, and do more, but I didn't. Um, I completely forget who it is. But you, you guys over there, you've got your receiving back, right? Not elite by any standard, but you've got him. You move on from Marshawn Lynch. You bring in L.J. Scott. It's sort of a later round thing, right? It's third round, maybe fourth round. You pick up a guy like L.J. Scott again. Based on his project projection, maybe he's third round, but based on his style and the fact that it's not really NFL's, you know, that this isn't what we're looking for, especially as a starting guy, right? You're not going to be an every down back like this. Very possible he slips to fourth, fifth round, um, despite his production. So he's, he's sort of a mid to later round guy that the Raiders might be able to pick up that can come in and be sort of an early down and goal line type of guy. So, um, as you can see, that's why I pulled up the Raiders. Um, SDSU versus Stanford. Um, maybe we'll call it half of you um, will be watching this game. Stanford, obviously, is the team with um, more talent. I decided to go with the obvious this time around. They, they, have, they have a decent amount of prospects, but this time around, the guy that everybody knows, Bryce Love, running back out of Stanford, 5'9", 196. He's a smaller guy, but he kind of fits that mold a little bit, right? The, the Le'Veon Bell types are more like 6'1", I think like 220, so they're... They're a lot bigger. So Bryce Love may not be. He might be more of like an Amir Abdullah or, or a uh, Duke Johnson kind of guy where he's just a receiving back, which um, I don't know if that's much more useful than L.J. Scott. But um, he could be a second-round candidate if teams see him as an every-down back, and I think it's possible. I know I read up a little bit on him. Um, they've, they've, I don't even know if this is technically correct. Is 59196. <clears throat> there it is. There's that cough that's been bugging me. But I know he put on a lot of weight, and they they stressed a lot that he needed to go into the weight room. Apparently, he's he's repping like three over 300 pounds. So the guy has been putting in serious work in the weight room because they want to get him to be an every down back, and he's been taking he's been doing it at Stanford, and that's going to be important for him to show 
um, not just production, but when you're watching Bryce Love, are they giving him a full workload? Is he taking a lot of hits? Does he get right back up? Can he punish people in front of him? Which seems impossible for a 5'9", 196 guy. But if you watch him play, if he's not only producing, if he's not only really fast, which, by the way, his um, projected 40 time is like in the 4.3s, like 4.36, really fast. Now, that's probably before he started packing on weight. So don't be surprised if that goes up a little bit. But I think it's more important that he proves he can be an every down back and run like, you know, 4 4 2 than it is to be a, a um, satellite back that runs a 4 3 6, in my opinion. Um, but that's that's what I want to see out of Bryce Love. I'm not going to be watching this game, but it, when I go back and watch Bryce Love, when he's taking somebody on, can he smack into him and knock him over? Is, is he kind of getting up slow? Is he carrying the ball 20 plus times per game? Can he handle that? Can he be that guy? And if he can, um, that's kind of where I want to go with him. The team fit that I had was the Colts. Um, it just When I'm looking at Bryce Love, I'm kind of looking at it as sort of a, I know running back is important, but I'm looking for a team that's maybe, I don't even know if I want to say close, but they have some weapons, but they could use a little bit more. When I look at the Colts, they've, they've done a lot to solidify the offensive line. Hopefully that pans out, right? They've got some young guys there. They've got a very good quarterback, and I think with that better offensive line, I think he's going to be able to have an opportunity to prove once again, which I don't know why he needs to reprove himself, but I, I think there's questions about has he lost a little bit with the injury, whatever. You've got a very good quarterback. You've got an improved offensive line. You've got T.Y. Hilton. I know you've got um, Mack, and uh, you know he's not horrible. He can do some stuff, but he's a terrible receiving back. So if nothing else, you've got a guy like Bryce Love, and he either comes back and he is – and every down back that can go between the tackles and be a receiver, or even if he's just a receiving back, that's an extra dimension that you can add to your offense. And if he's just a receiving back, he's probably not going to go in the second round. Right? He'll be a little bit later, so you don't have to invest as much. If he is an every down guy, you've got an elite talent that you can pick up in the second round. Right? You can invest first round in, in defense. You can go heavy defense after this. But you get a guy like Bryce Love, and it's sort of like those elite tight ends like Noah Fant that can kind of put you over the edge. Right? It's, it's that extra added weapon that when you when you think about the Colts, I don't think too many people are scared, although they maybe should be a little bit. Um, but you think about that Colts offense, and you think about what they have and how scary that can be, and then you add a dynamic weapon like Bryce Love and think about what his upside is. <coughs> oh, man. And um, I don't know. I, I just I, That kind of fit what I was looking for, right? That, that team that's, that's really good, but they just don't have much by way of, of – a run game, and it's not even just a run game, a running back weapon, which in today's NFL, like I said, it's not just running, but also being a receiver. You know, Also, with Bryce Love, do they ever use him as a as a wide receiver, like split him out? If he can do that, wow. I mean, in terms of his draft value. So in other words, if, if he can carry the ball, if he can take the punishment, um, if he's a good receiver, if he gets used as a wide receiver, if he can do all this stuff, we're, we're maybe looking to push him at the end of the first round. <coughs> Uh, finally, Western Kentucky versus Wisconsin. Obviously, I'm going to be watching this one because I live in Madison. Um, the guy to watch there, in my opinion, is David Edwards, tackle out of Wisconsin. Six foot seven, 315 pounds, possibly a first round draft candidate. Um, obviously, tackles are incredibly valuable. So if he's um, if he can prove his worth here, there's no reason he's not a first round candidate. Um, you know. It remains to be seen. He, he did get moved to right tackle, which maybe hurts his stock a little bit. He's better as a run blocker than a pass blocker, but that's not to say that he's a bad pass blocker. It's just more or less that he is an elite run blocker, which I don't think is the worst thing in the world. Um, I, the team that I picked, and it's not just out of bias, but it's, it's the Packers. I, I really think that's a good pick. I've been banging this drum for a long time that the Packers need to get better along the offensive line. I said it on this channel last year, and I got so many negative comments from people. The Packers don't need offensive. Look at the mess they're in right now. The offensive line is a disaster. If they, the, the offensive line interior, Lane Taylor, Corey Lindsley, and um, McCray, is a nightmare. Not only can we not run the ball, but pass blocking is terrible. Now, the tackles are pretty good. Balag is iffy, and he's injury prone. Bakhtiari is one of the best pass blockers in the NFL. But if we lose a single tackle, it doesn't matter which one, doomed absolutely doomed that's a ridiculous situation to be in ridiculous it should not be this way you get a guy like david edwards we have two first round draft picks your first pick ideally you get an edge rusher you know maybe it doesn't have to be i don't think it's as dire but they 
You move on from Clay. Now you just have Perry, who's injury prone. Behind him, I don't know. So it is a big need. So with that first one, you try to get an edge rusher. If you can get um, David Edwards at the end of the first round, I think you're in, in a real good situation for the Packers. I'd be extremely happy with that as my one-two edge rusher and tackle. I know a lot of people, they want to package it. Let's package it and get Nick Bosa. Yeah, if the Saints completely tank the year, which you can't, now that they have Teddy Bridgewater, it doesn't even matter if Drew Brees gets hurt. They're probably still not. The Packers, it would basically have to be Aaron Rodgers gets hurt, hurt again. We get a top 10 pick, and then we use the Saints um, pick to try to move up. Uh, close enough to get Bosa, but even then, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I just, I'm not that interested. There's enough guys. There's Cleveland Farrell. There's there's other guys that are pass rushers that you can look at. You don't have to get Nick Bosa. Of course, it would be awesome, but, you know, same with all the Packers fans who are obsessed with Khalil Mack. It's like, would you give it up, please? Jeez. Obsessed. It's not all or nothing. Anyways, enough ranting about uh, that stuff. Uh, again, short video. We're going to get these mock drafts going. Um, I actually have a little bit of time today. I was very efficient. So um, I'm going to be working on this, and I want to try to get it up tomorrow. More games. I'm doing another video. And um, hopefully by this weekend I can get a system down to figure out how to make this work, and uh, I'll get my first first-round mock draft officially up and ready to rock and roll. You folks have yourselves a fantastic day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.